Hello, Tuolity families. Uh, my name is Andrew Curl. I'm the principal at Tuolity Middle School. And today I'm going to walk you through um, the middle school schedule um, and how we arrived here. Um, the new schedule is set to start at the beginning of quarter two, which is November 16th. So first, I wanted to walk you through a timeline of, of how we arrived at the new schedule and why we we're making this shift. So in the summer, um, before the governor made the announcement that we were going to be in comprehensive distance learning for an extended period of time, we were asked to build a hybrid schedule. Um, and that means we needed to know how many students could be on campus, follow our health and safety metrics, um, as well as looking at our staffing needs uh, in order to see how we could safely um, bring about half of our population onto campus at a time. Obviously that changed um, as the metrics changed and the decision for CDL or comprehensive distance learning went into effect. So um, at the beginning of the year, we had a soft start. Um, so we had fires and the smoke. Um, teachers were also dealing with a new platform, a new curriculum, and we really wanted to focus on teaching kids how to do comprehensive distance learning and um, learn all the new systems and how to turn things in, as well as build relationships and connection um, so we can keep them connected to their learning, um, even if they were at home. Um, and so we asked for that. And so I'm sure um, for a lot of families, it didn't feel like they were getting um, the academic uh, rigor that um, they'd become accustomed to. And so that's understandable. Um, from there, we started to re receive some community feedback. Um, so there was concerns about the workload or lack of workload for some students and the amount of contact time um, with core instructors specifically. Um, and part of that was that we had a, a traditional hybrid schedule and, and maybe not a schedule that was built for long-term comprehensive distance learning. So we met with our staff. Um, we made a decision to receive more feedback, um, which is a practice at Tuolity and at TTSD um, to really make sure that we're hearing from all of our populations and all of our stakeholders. So we created a survey for staff, for students, and for families. And then our committee um, looked through that data to identify really some key problems that we wanted to try to solve if we were to make a shift to our schedule. So um, from there, we understood that in this environment, um, with the curriculum, um, now that we had really seen it and spent time with it, that we needed to add more support for advanced math. Um, so we interviewed and hired an additional advanced math teacher. And so students um, starting now um, should be working solely with those advanced math teachers during those blocks. And they will continue to have more support in advanced math um, as we move into quarter two. Uh, so we also uh, created some professional de development for teachers around supporting students in their independent learning. So we created a weekly calendar for independent, or what we call asynchronous work. So students should know for each class what the expectations are for work completion on those days, even when they're not with an instructor. And they can also still have opportunities to see elective teachers or core teachers throughout the, throughout the week during flex. Um, so we uh, convened a committee and we vetted multiple schedules that addressed key, the key problems that we identified. Um, and then along with that came the announcement that um, we would be in comprehensive distance learning um, into the end of semester one. And so that really shifted our thinking and, and how we thought about a schedule. Um, and again, the metrics um, have also changed since then. And so we also know that we will have to pivot at some point potentially into a hybrid model. So from there, um, we adopted a new schedule. So it was approved with core teachers, with elective teachers, with specialists in special education and our English learner, language learners, um, teachers, administrators, cabinet members, board members, and parents. Um, and so that's where we are at today. As I mentioned, our committee took survey data from staff, students, and families um, as we looked at ways to adjust our schedule. And so from that data, we identified some key problems that we wanted to solve. The first was increasing student and teacher contact time, um, especially in our core classes. And that's for our interactive and highly engaging sessions. Um, so we wanted to increase those throughout the week, especially in our core. Uh, number two, uh, we wanted to reduce the gap of time between core classes during the week that our students interact with teachers so they could see um, their teachers more frequently and have check more frequent check-ins throughout the week. And we wanted to position our teachers to confidently deliver courses in their area of greatest strength which necessitated um, the hire of our advanced math teacher. So as I 
jump in to show you the schedule, there's some key elements that I wanted to highlight. Um, our schedule is going to be a 10 period A day, B day schedule that repeats on Thursday and Friday. Um, so that'll be similar to what the high schools have had in previous years. Um, so periods one through five would be on Monday, six through 10 on Tuesday, one through five again repeats on Thursday, and six, six through 10 repeats on Friday. So students will increase contact time in their core classes. Um, we maintain a shorter morning meeting to support social emotional learning, but we know how valuable that is, especially in a distance learning environment. And we maintain flex opportunities for students to get additional support outside of the class day. We also know that our metrics um, have shifted a bit since we started this discussion. Um, so we will be able to pivot back to a hybrid in this model. So right now I'm gonna walk you through a schedule and this will be for a student with last names A through L. So um, period one will still be a morning meeting from nine o'clock to 9.30. Um, on Mondays, that will be a time for social emotional learning, um, a check-in with the community, um, and some of the things we've been working on this year. Um, on Thursday, um, students will have another morning meeting, where, which might be a check-in, but it also could be a flex opportunity and a way to um, access their core teachers um, on the, at, at the end of that week for the A through L co cohort. Um, then after that, um, students will go to period two, which will be their first core um, with language arts, and followed by period three, social studies. Um, and so if you're a student who um, is typically in a teacher team, that won't change. So really they're going to be starting their morning with that teacher and they're gonna be with that teacher from nine o'clock to 1130 um, where they receive language arts instruction, social studies instruction and their morning meeting. So for students, it's gonna feel really similar um, except for students will have both of their core classes on this day for language arts and social studies. At that point, students will have a lunch, and then period three might be math. Um, so 12.30 to 1.20, they'll go to their math class. If they're in an advanced math class, they're gonna take that with an advanced math instructor. Um, otherwise, they will be with their traditional core team that they've, they're already with now. Um, so they'll have math, followed by science, um, and their day will end at 2.20. So for an A through L student on the Tuesday and Friday, um, so this would be a B-day part of the schedule. So they would have from 9 o'clock to 9.30. Um, the students in the A through L cohort would have the opportunity to check in with their core teachers for a flex on that, on that Friday morning. Um, and then through Z would have that opportunity on Thursday. So from 9.40 to 10.30 would be the first elective opportunity for period 7. 10.40 to 11.30 would be period 8 for another elective opportunity or intervention or PE. Um, a lunch break, and then period 9 um, from 12.30 to 1.20, and period 10 from 1.30 to 2.20, which would be a flex opportunity for elective teachers, um, and it might be a place where a student would get support in a class um, such as reading. Um, so the periods are aligned identical between both days, so students know no matter what day it is, um, they need to be in class at the same time, and so that should create some level of consistency for students. Um, in addition to this, um, our Wednesday schedule will remain essentially the same. So they're gonna have a community check-in in the morning from nine o'clock. The final thing I wanted to share today um, was this idea of what students are going to be doing independently when they're not with an instructor. Um, and so one of the things we've been working on with our teachers um, is really creating a Monday through Friday schedule that really outlines the expectations throughout the week. Um, and this can be found on students' Canvas classes within their modules. Um, and most of our teachers are already using something like this. Um, but it really um, is designed to help students and let them know that every day, whether they're in class or not, there are things that they need to be working on independently. And there's gonna be a roadmap for each of the classes that's provided that helps kids um, really organize themselves for the week. And again, now they'll, they'll be seeing their instructor on a Monday, Thursday, or Tuesday and Friday for core or elective. Um, and so they'll see them more frequently throughout the week. And they also have flex opportunities if they have questions about this independent work. 
we're really hoping that um, these weekly schedules will um, really help kids stay on top of what needs to be done. And remember that as a parent, you have access to the Canvas class as well. And you can take a look at the weekly schedules and ask your students for those as well. Finally, I just wanted to take the time to thank you for watching this video and for your patience as we work through this process while listening to all the stakeholders in our community. We are going to hold an event on November 12th from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock so you can learn even more about our new schedule. So thanks again and go Thunderhawks!